Hi guys! Today's lesson is about the Hexer Olin model. There are five learning objectives for this lesson, and I hope that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to first explain the assumptions of the Hexer Olin model, second, discuss the model of a two factor economy, third, explain the choice in the use of inputs due to factor prices and good prices. Fourth, discuss how changes in resources affect the allocation of factors across sectors and the associated changes in output produced. Last, outline the production structure of a two-factor economy and what happens when two economies, home and foreign, trade with each other. Before we begin with the first learning objective, we will have a quick recap on what we have learned previously. In the Ricardian model, we focus on one factor production, which is labor. And labors are mobile factors which can move freely between sectors as illustrated in the example of cheese and wine industry. In the specific factor model, we discuss the three factors of production, labor, capital, and land. Same as in the Ricardian model, labors are mobile factors which able to move between sectors, whereas capital and land are immobile as well as specific to the production of only one sector. So, now we will see what the hexer olin model is. This model is developed by Ellie Hexer and Bertil Olin. Hence, the model is named based on their last name. As explained in the Ricardian model, it stated that comparative advantage is due to differences in productivity. That is, the efficiency of a nation in producing goods at lowest opportunity cost. Whereas, the hexer olin model explained that Comparative advantage is due to differences in national factors and domains, that is, differences in the combination of resources that a nation has. The model explained that when a country has more labor than capital, it will produce more goods using labor, therefore, export labor-intensive goods. In contrast, when a country has more capital than labor, it will produce more goods using capital, therefore export capital-intensive goods. The model emphasizes on the country factor proportion, that is, which factor, example, labor and capital, have higher amount of portion in comparison to each other. Therefore, it is also known as factor proportion theory. There are five assumptions underpin the model. First, there are two countries involved, home and foreign. Second, two goods are produced. We will use the same example in the previous lesson, that is, cloth and food. Third assumption highlights the differences, that is, the immobile factor that was specific to each sector in the specific factors model are now mobile in the long run. Therefore, land that used for farming can be used to build a textile plant, whereas the capital used to pay for sewing machine can be used to pay for a tractor. Fourth, the mix of labor and capital use a difference across sectors. Simply said, some sectors may use more labor but lesser capital and vice versa. Fifth, the supply of labor and capital is constant in each country but varies across countries. Here are two figures to illustrate the differences between 
the specific factor model and the Hexer-Orlin model. Bear in mind, the key difference between both models are the mobility of capital and land in the Hexer-Orlin model. And these two factors, capital and land, are no longer specific only to one production of group. Previously in Lesson 3, the Ricardian model, we discussed the one-factor economy with only labour to produce either wine or cheese. Now, we will illustrate the model of a two-factor economy based on the assumptions of the hexer orlin model. However, to keep things simple, we model a single additional factor, that is capital, which is used in conjunction with labour to produce either cloth or food. Hence, it is called as a two-factor economy. Again, bear in mind that under the two-factor economy, there are two goods, cloth and food, which can be produced with the combination of two factors of production, labor and capital. Recall that one of the assumptions under the hexer orlin model stated that the mix of labor and capital use are different across sectors. Simply said, some sector may use more labor but use lesser capital and vice versa. Therefore, both cloth and food sector would require different quantity or amount of labor and capital. At the same time, the country also has different quantity or amount of labor and capital available for the production. Okay, let us see based on numerical examples how the two-factor economy works. We assume that an economy is endowed with 3,000 units of machines hour along with 2,000 units of work hours. In order to produce one yard of cloth, it requires two capitals and two labors. Whereas, in order to produce one calorie of food, it requires three capital and one labor. Therefore, the total machine hours used for both cloth and food production cannot exceed the total supply of capital, that is 3,000 units of machines hours. This is the resource constraint for capital. Similarly, the resource constraint for labor stated that the total work hours used in production cannot exceed the total supply of labor, that is 2,000 units of work hours. This figure shows the production possibility in our numerical example. Using the equation derived, which capital equal to 3,000 machine hours, we assume zero unit of cloth produced. Therefore, maximum of 1,000 calories of food produced. In contrast, we assume zero unit of food produced. Therefore, maximum of 1,500 yard of clothes produced. Using the second equation derived, labor equal to 2,000 units of work hours. We assume zero unit of clothes produced. Therefore, maximum of 2,000 calories of food produced. In contrast, we assume zero unit of food produced. Therefore, maximum of 1,000 yard of clothes produced. If the economy specialized in food production using only capital, as indicated in point one, then it can produce 1,000 calories of food, but this is with excess of labor. 
If the economy specialized in cloth production using only labor, as indicated in point 2, then it can produce 1,000 yards of clothes. But this is with excess of capital. If the economy produced both goods using the combination of both capital and labor, as indicated in point 3, then it can produce 500 calories of food and 750 yards of clothes. So, we can see that the economy has the choice to choose the input for production, either only to produce with capital, as indicated in point 1, to produce only with labor, as indicated in point 2, or to produce with both capital and labor, as indicated in point 3. Based on the previous PPF, we can see that the slope for both goods are in straight line. This is because it does not allow substitutions in the factor of production. Simply say, if an economy does not use capital, they cannot substitute capital with labor. Hence, there will be excess of capital and vice versa. Remember point 1 and point 2, which the production is only based on either capital or labor? Therefore, it will have excess of the factor production that is not being used. However, when an economy allows the substitution between factors of production, hence a curve or bow slope can be seen as follow. Substitution can avoid factors of production not being used. Okay, thus far we have discussed which inputs or mix of inputs to be used in the production. So, what does the country produce? The country produce at the point that maximize the value of production. This is also the point on the highest possible ISO value line as indicated in point Q. At this point Q, the opportunity cost for both goods are equal. As mentioned earlier, the two-factor economy emphasizes on the mobility of two factors of production, as well as the combination of factor production which can be different. Hence, the economy has their choices in the use of input, that is, use more capital or labor or vice versa. We assume that now a farmer can choose to use whether more capital or more labor in food production. Based on this figure, we can see that as indicated in point A, it shows that farmer use more capital than labor. Hence, it is capital intensive. Whereas, as indicated in point B, farmer uses less capital but more labor. Hence, it is labor intensive. So again, it emphasizes that an economy can make decision on the choice of inputs, whether use more labor or capital or vice versa. But what input choices will producer make? How they know whether it is better to be capital or labor intensive? The answer is depends on the relative cost of capital and labor. So, if the cost of capital is lower than the cost of labor, hence, producer will choose capital-intensive input. In contrast, if the cost of capital is higher than the cost of labor, hence, producer will choose labor-intensive inputs. Simply say it, Producer will always try to minimize the cost of production. Therefore, they will choose whichever cost of production that is lower than the other. Using the previous numerical example, that is, two labels and two capital are required to produce clothes, whereas one labor and three capital are required to produce food, 
we can see that clothes is labor intensive whereas food is capital intensive therefore a good cannot be both capital and labor intensive they have to be either one and this figure shows the production possibility for both good and cloth and we can see that cloth production is shifted out relative to food production because it is indicating that at any given factor prices production of clothes will always use more labor relative to capital than food production in competitive markets the price of a good should equal to the cost of production cost of production is based on the capital and labor use for capital use we pay rental whereas for labor use we pay wages so an increase in the rental rate of capital should affect the price of food more than the price of clothes this is because food is capital intensive sector based on this figure we can say that the relative price and cost of input have a positive relationship as the slope curve upward therefore if cloth production uses more labor a rise in wage will have a large effect on the price here we compare again the two figures that we have explained earlier the first figure shows the cost and price of factors which when wage or rental increases the price of cloth or food also increase a positive relationship the second figure shows the slope of which sector is labor or capital intensive the connection between both figure is on the wage rental ratio and we will explain this connection in the following slide first of all we counter clockwise the cost and price of factor figure because we want the wage rental ratio on the same side for both figures in order to show the connection we assume that if the relative price of clothes increase the wage rental ratio also increase the rise of the wage rental ratio will cause the labor capital ratio to drop for both goods why drop recall that cloth is labor intensive and the rise in price of clothes makes labor now is relatively more expensive and why labor capital ratio also drop for food production although food is capital intensive this is because food production still use labor but only in lesser amount than cloth production so we can see that the amount drop is bigger for cloth production than in food production so far we have discussed about the inputs of production mix of labor and capital and the effects of prices on the cost of inputs now we will see the outputs of an economy we now assume that an economy's labor force grow hence the increased number of labor will be benefited to cloth production because cloth is labor intensive whereas food is capital intensive an increase in the supply of labor shift the economy production frontier outward from tt1 to tt2 but does so disproportionately in the direction of cloth production only the cloth of the output of cloth increase whereas the output of food decrease therefore we can summarize that an economy with a high ratio of labor to capital produce high output of cloth relative to food now we have reached the last part of today's lesson the thread between two factors economies which is between home and foreign country recall the earlier discussion that 
Growth of labor in an economy will benefit the labor-intensive sector, which is clothes sector. From here, we assume that home country has more labor, whereas foreign country has more capital. At the same time, home country also has less capital, whereas foreign country has less labor. Therefore, home country will be relatively efficient at producing cloth, whereas foreign country will be relatively efficient at producing food. Since cloth is relatively labor intensive, hence home country able to produce more cloth than foreign country. This is indicated in point one. When there is no trade, more cloth is produced and the home supply curve, RS, is at the right. We can see that the supply curve for the home country is at the left, as indicated in point 3, which when no trade, they supply lesser cloth because foreign country, as in the assumption, is capital intensive, hence will supply more food than cloth. And with the assumption of trade, a new intersection is indicated in point two. So, home country export clothes to foreign country, whereas foreign country export food to home country. This is how the international trade between two factor economy works. So, that's all for today's lesson. Thank you and see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.